Hi, I'm Donna Kallner. This is Lesson 3 of the CrossNet Looping eCourse. In this lesson, you'll learn some texture variations based on different ways to hold a piece and manage the thread. You'll see some practice project ideas and we'll revisit design considerations in a cross-knit looping project. In all of those units, you'll be working with flat panels. In Lesson 1, you learn to work from a needle chain start in a continuous spiral to form a small pouch. In this unit, you'll learn to work from a needle chain start working back and forth across the live edge. In Lesson 1, you also learned two different ways to hold the piece as you worked. In this unit, you'll use both ways of holding the work depending upon which way you're moving across the live edge. My demonstration is right-handed, always working from left to right, so I use my dominant hand for the fine motor skills needed to manage the needle and my non-dominant hand to help manage the thread. If you're left-handed, you'll work from right to left instead. I'm also going to do two things in this unit that you've probably heard me say you will never do. So much for that. The first is count. Yes, I'm going to count stitches in the demo, and you might find it helpful to count stitches as you begin back and forth cross knit too. Soon you'll be able to trust your eyes, but it's easy to make an unintentional increase or decrease while you're learning this technique. Counting stitches is a good self-check against that. And the other thing I said you'd never do? Well, that's going to come in a couple of rows. But first, let's get started with a needle chain just like what you learned in Lesson 1. After closing the chain, rotate it so you can begin stitching across one of the long edges. Begin with one stitch of simple looping. Now, you'll only begin with a stitch of simple looping on the first row row. We'll talk more about this at the end of the row. After that first stitch of simple looping on the first row, switch right away to cross knit looping and work cross knit across the long edge. Let's count the number of stitches that I want to maintain in this sample. That's seven cross-knit stitches. Don't try to trap the tail with your stitching on this first row. Without the increases you made in the round base in Lesson 2, there is not an easy way to trap a tail with cross-knit stitches. So instead, we'll use that loose tail as a marker for the starting point which can help you reorient the piece later on. After working across the live edge, make one stitch of simple looping at the end of the row. All rows end with one stitch of simple looping in this flat panel technique. As you'll see, this creates a salvage along both sides of a panel that comes in handy in, when you're connecting elements later on. To begin the next row, rotate the piece 180 degrees. Now, this rotation is the opposite direction from lesson one, where you rotated the needle chain base to work in a continuous spiral. For back and forth cross knit looping panels, keep the front of the fabric up 
and rotate the piece so that the live edge is at the bottom as you work across one row and at the top as you work back on the next row. This way you're always working toward your dominant hand. So far in this class I've said again and again that the needle always passes over the working thread in cross knit looping. Well that's going to change now. In the next unit of this lesson we'll take a closer look at the patterns and textures of cross knit stitch variations. For now though let me just show you how to maintain a consistent pattern in your stitches as you work back and forth. Insert the needle behind a stitch on the previous row with the needle traveling behind the working thread. As you draw the thread, be particularly mindful of your thread control. Tight stitches can be harder to find on the next row. So strip and goose and remember to control your allocation of thread on the lags between stitches. Notice how the lags snuggle up next to each other all aligned. So when the live edge is at the top of a panel, the needle travels behind the working thread. When the live edge is at the bottom of a panel, the needle travels over the working thread. Let's go back and finish that row where the live edge is at the top of the panel. At the end of the row, make one stitch of simple looping for the salvage. Rotate the piece and work back across the live edge. At the end of that row, make one stitch of simple looping for the selvage, rotate the piece, and work back across the live edge. Check the stitch count as you work back across the live edge. Sample that counting as you go to maintain the same number of stitches in each row lined up directly one between, beneath the other and a selvage along both sides that you can stitch into to connect elements later. Now's a good time to practice reorienting a panel when you pick it up again after an interruption. Practice makes it easier to get going again later when you may not remember whether you had the live edge at the top or at the bottom. The tail of the needle chain comes in handy here. Which side is that on at the end of a row where the live edge is at the bottom? Mark that in your memory. It'll come in handy later. Here's another tip for when you have to add thread. I can't tell you how many times I've spliced a new thread to the tail of the needle chain instead of the tag end of the yarn at the live edge of the piece. So before you put the panel down, go ahead and fray out the tag end of the yarn where you intend to splice. That little frayed bit will help to remind you where to add the new thread. That's it for this demonstration, which has shown you that 
By alternating rows where the needle passes over the working thread with rows where the needle passes under the working thread, you'll be able to produce a consistent pattern of smooth, V-shaped, stockinette-like stitches on the front and bumpy, garter-like stitches on the back. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at the structure and you'll see how simple variations can create different textures in cross-knit looping. I'll see you there.